Due to the heavily automated defending system and the reduced speed of normal passes, building up in possession play is quite challenging. Through passes also seem to have enough, therefore spamming L1 passes often intercepted by the opponent's overpowered matchup is not advisable. Another drawback of relying on L1 passes is the inability to defend effectively in the middle area when countered after sending most of the frontline attackers towards the opponent's goal. Consequently, when playing possession, awareness of and capitalizing on open space are vital and R1 pass can be quite useful. While L1 pass prompts the player to run straight after passing, R1 pass uh, causes the player to run in a curved path. Despite the seemingly random movement associated with R1 pass, there is a discernible pattern to the player's running. First, the direction in which the player runs after R1 pass is decided by the direction they are facing while passing. Second, the player's running direction after R1 pass is influenced by the positioning of the player receiving the ball and the place from which the pass is made. I will elucidate this uh, with some example clips. The player runs in the direction he is passing the ball. Whether the player passing the ball with R1 pass runs before or behind the teammate receiving the ball is determined by the distance or width between the player making the pass and the teammate receiving the pass. When the player passes the ball to a teammate on the side, the player always runs uh, behind the teammate receiving the pass, the option to run forward is available with L1 pass. So in this case, the direction of a running with R1 pass is always determined to be behind the teammate receiving the pass. In the final third area, it may seem a bit complicated but it's simple. When a player passes to a teammate in front, the player runs behind the teammate receiving the pass, curving towards the goal. When a player passes to a teammate behind, the player runs past the uh, teammate receiving the pass, curving in front. When the width between the player passing the ball and the teammate receiving it is wide, the player usually runs in front of the uh, teammate curving toward the goal, but if the width is narrow, the uh, player mostly runs behind the teammate and curves toward the goal. When the player passes the ball to a teammate in front, the player usually runs behind the teammate and towards the side of the goal. The option to run forward is available with L1 pass. R1 pass can also be used for switching position. The movement after R1 pass in the goal area side is also determined by the width between the player and the teammate receiving the pass. If the width is narrow, the player runs behind the teammate. If it's wide, he runs in front of the teammate. When facing strong pressure from the opponent, receiving the ball here can lead to an immediate turnover and the potential goal conceding. In such situations, returning the ball with R1 pass and moving the player into open space can be a viable option. You can effectively use R1 pass not only to reduce the risk of being intercepted by heavily buffed matchups, but also to pass to a teammate through open space after moving into vacant areas. After moving Chavi into space with R1 pass, I involved him in the build-up. If Iniesta had passed to Maradona in front with a one-touch pass upon receiving the ball, Maradona would have been isolated immediately, thus failing to create a threatening scoring chance. When Arnold passes the ball to Iniesta and when he receives the ball, most of the passing routes forward are blocked. At this point, Aran pass moves Arnold behind Iniesta and toward the sideline and creates the space for passing the ball forward. 
Ping-pong passes can be easily intercepted because the pass speed has been heavily nerfed. Around pass can be useful in utilizing empty space to transition the build-up in a different direction. When an empty space is available, you can use Aran pass to move the player into the empty space and when an immediate returning pass is not easy, use a triangular passing to build up the play. In a situation where Maradona is ahead, even if Messi receives the pass and immediately turns to dribble, he doesn't seem to be able to dribble past all the opponents. To buy time for teammates to push up, Messi, after receiving the pass, returns it with Aran and moves into empty space. Since Xavi can't pass the ball directly to Ribéry, I use Aran pass to move Vieira to the side. While I could pass directly to Vieira, there would likely be a strong pressure from behind, so I use triangular pass to connect to Vieira. When Vieira receives the pass, all passing routes seem blocked except for back pass. If I pass to Arnold on the side, he would likely face a strong pressure from nearby opponents. In this situation, I also attempt to build up by using Aran pass by moving Vieira into empty space. By moving players into empty space using R1 pass, you can attempt to build up and create scoring chances. However, you should be cautious when using R1 pass with center backs or defensive midfielders because the space is momentarily exposed. If a turnover occurs, there is a risk of conceding a goal. The safest way is likely when attempting a cut in with wingers or attacking side backs. Aran Pass can create passing opportunities, avoiding predictable passing routes, which can be uh, useful in shaking up heavily automated and buffed defending system, allowing for a more dynamic build play. Lastly, my opinion about current gameplay is, well, my opinion might not be important. I'm not an influential YouTuber, and if it suits your taste, you can play, and if not, you don't need to. I've always tried to understand the direction of every update and think positively about them rather than complaining and criticizing them negatively. However, this update, well, it feels a bit overly distorted. The intensity of competing for the ball, well, I like it, but instead of experiencing the uh, excitement and the thrill through the gameplay, I feel lots of frustration and irritation. The pass speed is excessively slow and AI defense has been unreasonably buffed with problems still in the game. Most importantly, fundamental principles of physics such as the center of gravity and inertia are gone. It's really uh, severely distorted. While I understand the companies need to change the gameplay to attract new users, but such distortion will disappoint many existing users who have been playing with a love for the game. Now, I'm not sure anymore. It seems like the vision that they initially had for the game is disappearing, and I don't know where they are heading, and I don't know where the loyalty of existing users will be headed who have been playing with patience for years and the development direction they want to uh, present in this game, well, beats me. But I still hope that the game will be polished into a proper football game. Well, nice touch. Thanks for watching, guys. Messi. We're still waiting for a goal to report here. Barcelona looking to pass their way through. Interesting ball. Nice ball and he's in here. Can he finish? And yes, it's there! Xavi. Neither of these two want to come off second best. And here's... M and it's Cancelo. And here's Ribéry. Well, the crowd's impatience is an indicator that they haven't quite given up on a goal just yet. Big chance! They deserve an awful lot of credit for their commitment to the cause, but it's a goal credit that would be most welcome now. Messi, now it's Messi. 
He's had a shot! Hey. Now, who's going to be first to this? Oh, great play! And here's Messi. Back when it goes. Now the finish! Have hauled themselves off the canvas. It was a great finish. He put it away with great poise. Dead on.